Cookie Dog is no longer with us, but now I have Gracie, who looks a lot like Cookie. And now she's more of a picky eater. She's decided, well, a while ago that she didn't really like to eat her dry kibble by itself. But if I just added water to it, still didn't like it. So I was adding some expensive stews. And so that got pricey. So I decided to make my own food. So doing some research, finding out what vets are okay with. Now this, what I'm making is actually something that's just a supplement. It's not taking over her kibble, but when I mix it with her kibble and do it a few hours ahead of time and put the bowl in the refrigerator, the kibble softens, it's mixed with the stew and she eats both. Now in the future, if she just turns her nose up at the kibble all together and I'm making the same stew, I'll add a supplement to it, say a powdered supplement. There are many on the market that are very good that has all kinds of other nutrients that dogs need. I make this in a crock pot, but if you have an Instapot and you know how to use it, I don't have one, you can use that or you can cook it on the stove in a big soup pot. I start with ground meat such as ground turkey, ground chicken, ground beef, ground lamb, something. About three pounds, two and a half to three pounds of the meat and then a bunch of vegetables and a couple fruits actually that just add additional nutrients to the dish. You can actually add any vegetables that your dog likes. So let's get right to it and I'll show you what I put into it, how I chop it up and how I get it right into the crock pot. And then afterward, I'll show you what it looks like and how much she loves it. So I'm ready to chop the vegetables. I also have the ground meat. I have a sweet potato, regular potato, apple, a couple carrots, small amount of broccoli, spinach, peas, and blueberries. My dog doesn't like rice. She won't eat that and she won't eat asparagus. I also have kind of out of the camera shot one and a half cups of water, which will end up making a very nice gravy. Now I have everything chopped, the sweet potato and white potato in this bowl. And you'll notice that I did peel off the peel. And if you want to keep the peel on because it has nutrients, for your dog, go ahead and do that. It's up to you. You gotta know your dog. I've got a little dog, and sometimes peels on potatoes don't work well with them. Broccoli, carrots, and apples. Now the apples and the blueberries are gonna cook down. You won't even see them in this stew when you're done, just because there's fruit and a lot of water in them. I cut the carrots into a size that I know my dog can handle and chew really well. She has all of her teeth, so she can handle a size that big. I've also brought out some coconut oil because I'm gonna put some of that into the crock pot as well. I'll start by putting the ground beef into the crock pot and I wanna break it up in small pieces because I don't want it cooking all together. Now, if you like to cook your ground meats for the dog first, and then put them in the crock pot. Of course you can do that. And if you are making this in a big pot on the stove, I would suggest that you brown the meat first. But in a crock pot, you don't really need to do that. So I'm just breaking it up so that I don't wind up with really big clumps later. But of course, while it's cooking, I can open up the lid and break it up as well as it cooks. And then I'm just going to add all of the other ingredients. The peas and the blueberries are actually frozen. For the coconut oil, I'll probably put in about a tablespoon or two and I'll stir it up later because it's winter. All of my coconut oil is solid. And then one and a half cups of water. And don't do what I've done before when I've used the crock pot where I have either forgotten to plug it in or I've forgotten to turn it on. So I'm starting off on high, but let me tell you the hours. So if you do it on high, this will cook in between three hours and five hours. If you put it on low, it'll cook in between five hours and seven hours. So it's already 220. 
And so I'm going to start it off on high, but I'll probably turn it to low later, keeping an eye on the meat. When this is done, if your dog is missing teeth, you'll want to mash it with some kind of masher just to make it easier for a dog missing teeth to eat. My dog has all her teeth, so that's why I have it in little bits. And then you can spoon it up into any size container you want. I like to refrigerate some of it. It'll last in the refrigerator for a few days. And then I like to freeze the rest into smaller containers that I can take out and um, use at any time. Now, some of the pieces of the ground meat might still be in bigger chunks than my little dog can handle, but those can be easily broken up. And I like that it has a gravy and um, some moistness because like I said, I want it to mix with her kibble and soften up her kibble so she doesn't realize the kibble's in there. Uh -huh. So yeah, looky, looky. This is, this is gonna be your dinner. It's very hot <laughs> right now, but she loves it. And you know, if you have a dog that's finicky or has allergies or what have you, and you find healthy, nutritious food that's good for the dog that the dog loves, you just feel like a proud doggy mama, right? Right? All right, thanks for watching.